it does not it is not the best way to you know store values you know because your aim is that porosity is 0.23 permeability is 200 if you want to set a mapping right now right but here it is not happening because every element is a unique element in itself it's a standalone element in itself a list is a bag of values there is no mapping of values you can never be like unless and until you 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 know you supervise something you tell them that hey porosity is 0 0.23 and permeability is 200 they can never understand what's going on here so what if you wanted to do the same thing using a better data type dictionary is that data type okay dictionary is something like this key one colon value one key two colon value two and so on Okay, this is a dictionary. So you might have guessed that I can provide a key like a porosity, store all the porosities here. I can set a value like a, uh, I can set a key like a depth and store all the depths there. Okay, let's let's use the depth versus porosity example. Okay, depth versus porosities. What I can do is I can create a key like depth, depth in feet. I have already created the depths list and I can create porosities. And I can store them in poros at depth. OK, so now what we can do, the benefit of doing that is uh, if you print it. You can see. It has a mapping now depth has all these values. Porosities has all these values. Let me give you a, a slightly forward example. The benefit of creating a dictionary is you can import Panda as a PD, convert a dictionary to a data frame with this two lines of code. It's not even two lines. Import is never counted as a separate command, just one line of code. And you can see it is now very nicely printed as you know a data type a data data set this gets us closer to data analysis okay and it is very intuitive as well depth is the title this is the column values porosities is the column title these are the column values okay it depends on you how you want to store it some people keep them as a dictionary they don't convert it but if you have a possibility to convert it to a data frame so that it looks better, why not convert it to a data frame? The benefit of that is you can do something like a plot as well dot plot. So you can see uh, right now it's not clear. You can access a particular let's say poros porosities. And do a dot plot as simple as that and you can see with depth the porosity is decreasing. OK, so it it allows it brings in a lot of possibilities just if you convert things to a data frame. Reminder, you cannot do the plotting thing by just using a dictionary. That's just a, you know. A sneak peek. OK. So that's we will look at Panda separately, but this is just a you know a slightly slight heads up that if you convert things to a dictionary there is a slight benefit there okay now what if you wanted to just you know in from this dictionary you wanted to access the list of porosities you can do this you cannot do this uh, list kind of slicing okay list kind of indexing there is nothing like a depth versus porosity zeroth index you have to provide keys to access the values okay for example you want to do the depths this is the way okay I would advise everyone after you know I mean whatever whenever you get the time the context is good enough but there is a lot of things that are there. Uh, I, it, it, it helps to have a context first so that you can confidently look around the internet and practice your hands on on whatever is possible with a dictionary. All right. So that was about dictionaries and uh, I think uh, we will now have uh, questions and answers for uh, whatever we looked at for this session have some discussion clear some doubts and get ourselves ready for the next session which will be two hours after this so 
I'll be looking at the chat. I think. Uh, any any doubts? Anyone? Please let me know. Any particular clarification needed on anything? Anything you want me to repeat? Slicing, OK, let's repeat slicing. I think. Slicing, let's pick up a string, OK? Let's pick up a string. For example, yeah, this is slicing, OK? You have a string. Assume a string to be a bread, uh, a stack of breads. You want to you want to cut a slice from that. OK, now if you want to slice a portion of something, what informations do you need? You need the starting from where you want to slide slice. You want the stopping point up to where you want to slice. And if in case you don't want to slice a continuous sequence, you want to slice alternate elements or a stepwise slicing. You want to provide a step size as well. By default, the step is one, which means you are picking every element. But if you provide a step size of two, it means it will skip one element. If you provide a step size of three, it will skip two elements. OK, let's let's look at a few more examples. For example, uh, I can create a string. College, for example, college, let's say you provide IIT underscore. Bombay underscore. Right, this is a string that you have created. Now let's look at a few slicing examples. What if you just wanted to print I I T? You would start at the zeroth index. The step size because we are aiming to have all the elements continuously, no alt no skipping things. The step size either you keep it to be default or you provide a step size of one. And the ending element should be what I I T. So you college you start at zero. You stop at because the stopping element is not included. So the stopping element has to be 0, 1, 2, 3. And the step size of 1. So you can see I, I, T is printed. What if you wanted to include the underscore as well? You would use the index of after the underscore. So what is the index of after the underscore? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So if you use 4 here, you can see the underscore is included. What if you wanted to use the entire IIT underscore Bombay string. So you start with 0, 1, 2. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So ideally you won't, you'd want to start at the 0th index and end at 9 plus 1th, so 10. In all these examples, we were aiming to have all the elements, but what if you wanted to print alternate elements you are trying to skip one element after every element so in that case you would use the step size of two so you can see i is printed the other i is dropped then t is printed underscore is dropped b is printed o is dropped m is printed b is dropped a is printed y is dropped and then we have ended our scope because the 10th index has been reached so that is it is it is clear right how to do a slicing. I would advise you to, you know, just get your hands on, do some few examples on your own self and you would uh, definitely get get around it. So Raghuveer, uh, what? What are you like? What is your doubt? I don't understand. What are you aiming to start with? In Python, are you asking how to start with uh, Python interpreter or something like that? You can open, you can go to google.com, search Google Collab, and accordingly you find it. Uh, Soumya says, can you repeat the dictionary? Sure. Okay, so a dictionary is, like I told you, a dictionary is what? Something, what is a dictionary in real terms? Forget Python. A dictionary has a structure, right? Every dictionary, Oxford dictionary, you will have the name and uh, uh, the word, and then the definition of that word. Right, that's a dictionary. 
in python as well the same structure is followed this is the word and this is the definition of that word just that the definition for engineers it is not valid you would rather store values of that title so this is the title for which we want to store values and this is the values so this is the syntax uh yes darius there is a way to do complex number calculations in python so uh, uh I, I you can search on google but i have rarely used them but yep there is a way to do that in 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 uh, python so in the next session maybe i will i will let you know right so you can see somia that key colon value so let's create a very simple dictionary okay my details for example i want to store all my details whatever they are in a particular data type and i want to be able to fetch those details later on okay for example my name i can store my name like this pvs okay my age i can store my age like let's say 10 years okay my interests i can store them like let's say math okay and i can i can provide the other things like my projects what kind of projects i have done so i can create a list as i'm as i'm creating more and more uh, informations i am realizing that i have to use different data types for example a name can always be a string age does not have to be a string age can be an integer interests again it can be a string depending on my use case my projects because they are list of things i can use a list for that i can use let's say for example projects can be ev project i can be a uh, pam project uh, i can have let's say ml projects ml etc okay and this is all about me now this is a dictionary now what if i i my manager ask me hey from your details can you tell me what were the, what were the projects that you had done so i can do that my details is my dictionary and i can provide the specific key because the projects were stored under this title i can access that now later down the lane the benefit of dictionary is what if i realize that hey i wanted to add a few more details for example my hometown i wanted to add right my details my hometown okay i can do this like this okay very simple my hometown is let's say pali rajasthan okay and i can check the the new dictionary you can see the new dictionary has a hometown thing as well all right so the benefit of dictionary is it can keep on growing throughout and you can access the details now what if i wanted to you know check my age my age my details my age for example i might be looking at this dictionary two years after i had created it i would want to you know assign my age i want to add two to my age so my details age plus two so it's like i'm updating my age to plus two because two years have passed so now if i look at my dictionary again my details you can see my age is now 12 so the dictionary keeps on modifying itself is the most intuitive and understandable data type it's not like list because like uh, darius already you know we started getting confusing confused even i was confused when i first looked at uh, list slicing and indexing but in dictionary there is nothing like a slice or an index the order is not important it's as if we have a folder every file is stored as a different title that's a dictionary okay it's as if we have a we have a box in that box we have separate chambers every chamber has a title written on it so that we can open that particular chamber by its name if i need, if i need the name chamber i can look at the title i can bring that up if i want to add something else to my name i can bring that chamber first add something the entire box gets updated so swami am i clear what what dictionary is i hope i am uh, any any uh, other doubt anyone please feel free very important basics these because in the next session we will be looking at uh, trying to solve 
uh, our problems in in Python, and these will be coming in 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 action there. So, anything anyone did not understand, let me know. We'll wait for let's say five to ten minutes uh, for some questions, and then I think we can uh, you know halt the session and come back after two hours. Pupil Manish, if you did not understand, it's fine. I mean, it's it's very rarely used. If you understood list, okay, a list had a had a flexibility that you can edit a list, and it had square brackets. So if you replace the square brackets with, uh, you know, parentheses, okay, that becomes a tuple. Just by this small change, the security comes in. It's as if a tuple is a is a list with. Uh, security security guards around it. You can never do any change after you convert a list to a tuple. So a tuple is nothing. For example, let me go back to the tuple. OK, let me create a tuple. My rock, my poros, for example, I have my poros. I, if I store them like this, 23, 25, 27, this becomes a tuple. I can check the data type. This is all there is about tuples. The only the only other thing there is about tuples is you cannot edit it. My poros uh, zero uh, zero index. I can access the values. But I cannot edit them 23 by 100. I cannot edit them. So Deepak about data frames, we will look at them in a separate session. This was just a slight introduction. OK, we had created a dictionary. I imported a particular package. I use this PD dot data frame function and passed the dictionary inside that function that became a table. Nothing else, nothing else, absolutely nothing else. We will have a separate session for understanding pandas and there there you will understand it better. So don't worry about that. Any other doubt, anyone? 